Dolores Voorhees. She has been a senior minister at Hillside International Church Center under Bishop Reverend Barbara King. She has been a speaker traveling all across the United States, a women's conference workshop leader. She's been a dynamic energy of love and light in this world. Today, as we're celebrating Black History Month, we reflect on so many in the African-American community who have made incredible contributions, not only in our past, but in our present. And today, we're honoring her as someone who is truly making a great contribution in our world, who's making a difference through her teaching, through her love and light that she's sharing continually, and through the wonderful things that she founds, lifting us and taking us to a higher place. We're going to welcome her with this great spirit of love. Let's give her a round of applause as we say thank you so much for coming, Dolores. And we're delighted for that which you have to share with us. God bless you. Good morning, City of Light. Good morning. I'm so glad to be back with you all. And I'm thanking Dr. Paul for inviting me. And Dr. David, thank you for that affirming prayer. That was you. I, I didn't see you, but I heard you. That was you, and that was beautiful. Thank you so much for that. Well, my topic this morning is with a child's heart. And since this is Black History Month, well, let me start here. Because, you know, I appreciate and love the fact that we do have a Black History Month, an African American History Month. But by the same token, I wish it wasn't necessary. You follow me? I wish it wasn't necessary because we just talked about love. And as we talk about love, love is something that's inherent in all of us. It's a gift that God gave all of us. And I wish we were to the point where we express that love to the point it wasn't necessary to, to distinguish. It would be our history of the people in the United States of America. But nevertheless, we are where we are, but it's people like us here at City of Light and those that you will be with Saturday at the Meditation for Peace who will make the difference, who will lift this energy up in the universe and spread it throughout. And, you know, if you could only understand how important you are, and how much of a difference you make. And you don't have to have some fancy title or some degree or live in a certain area or whatever. You, as the creation of the one presence, one God, are so dynamic and have so much power and energy to share with this world. So back to with a child's heart. An African-American singer-songwriter inspired me, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> Stevie Wonder is a phenomenal musician, songwriter, singer, and has done a lot for the African-American community. But he has this song, and I'm going to share a few words with you. It says, with a child's heart, go face the worries of the day. With a child's heart, turn each problem into play. No need to worry. No need to fear. Just being alive makes it all so very clear. With a child's heart, nothing can ever get you down. With a child's heart, you've got no reason to frown. Love is as welcome as a sunny, sunny day. No grown-up thoughts to lead us or to lead our hearts to pray. Take life easy, so easy, nice and easy. Like a child, so gay and careful. The whole world smiles with you as you go your merry way. Oh, with a child's heart, nothing's going to get I wonder if you took that in and just lived your life from that position with a child's heart. And when we think of what a child's heart is, a child's heart is so loving. 
a child's heart is so in the now. Have you ever noticed children are right here, right now? And that's all that they're concerned with. They're not worried about what they did yesterday. They're not worried about what's going to happen tomorrow or even what's going to happen an hour from now. They're right here, right now, in the moment. And children love the world unconditionally if left to their own devices. But children end up picking up things from their parents. You know, when I bless babies, there's a poem that I read. Children learn what they live. So a lot of times what would be a peaceful world is changed because of the environment that children are in. And it shifts their way of thinking, feeling, and belief. But left to their own devices, children from all over the world would be in this room and they would be playing and have a wonderful time together. But what about you? With a child, what could you do? How could you change things in your environment? What would happen? Had a child's heart. You would love unconditionally. You would forgive. And I always tell people because I know for a lot of people, forgiveness, for a lot of people, forgiveness is difficult. But understand forgiveness is not, is not, is not for the other person. Forgiveness is for you. It's for you. It's to set you free. It's to shift you because the thoughts that you hold that are unforgiving are blocking the blessings this spirit. So if for no other reason has nothing to do with the other person, just setting yourself free and opening that channel between you and spirit so that you are open and receptive to the blessing. Letting Letting go, trusting. Trusting is simply faith. And we know faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And if you ever look in your Bible and keep you see the letter, it will list all of the people in the Bible who had an experience with faith, trusting when they didn't see. And it makes it sound challenging, but when we have a foundation based on I am one with God and God is one with me and the presence and power of God is within me and nothing and no one can separate me from the love of God, why worry? If greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world, why worry? If God be for you, and who can be against you? I worry. When we realize who we are, when we realize that we are God expression, I'm God expressing glory. Dr. Paul is God expressing Dr. Paul. Dr. Adam. They're expressing God in spite of what they do. They do the work. That presence is in them. It's in you. And we've got to learn to live more with that and trust that this universe is here from all good. I trust in the goodness of God. Say that with me. I trust in the goodness of God. I trust in the goodness of God in me. I trust in the goodness of God in my world. I trust in the goodness of God in my experience. What happens when you say that on a daily basis? What are you setting up in your experience? What are you setting yourself up for? You don't have to know how it is. I, it's the interesting thing. I'm going to tell you a little story. 
I spoke at Unity South last Sunday. And when I came in, it was pouring down rain, so I had a rain boot. And I went to, you know, I sat down to take off my rain boots and so forth. And so one of the members said, come with me. Okay. So I go in the back. Can you wear this? What she had was a red suit. Now, the back story is, I've been looking for a red suit. I've been to the malls and I've seen things. They didn't have my size. It didn't fit right. You know, ladies, you all know what I go, you know what we go through. And I said, well, so I tried on the jacket, not to mention that I've lost 20 pounds. I um I could fit the jacket. So I'm like, thank you. But do you see what I'm saying to you about the goodness of God? And we don't have to know where it's coming from. So I got a beautiful red suit. I didn't have to. But it was a gift. And there's no way you could have told me when I got up to go speak that I was going to be going home with a suit. Never, I would have never thought of that in a million years. I would have still been looking, checking Dillard's, checking Macy's, you know, on going online, looking for a red suit. But what I'm saying to you is there's a presence, there's a power within us. When we align our hearts, when we think those thoughts in love, when we let love permeate our being, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us about love and how patient and kind and all the things that love is. Homework assignment. Read that for the you got this jar going for 50 days. Read First Corinthians chapter 13 about love, those 50 days, along with your affirmation. See what happens in you. See what will happen. I challenge you to do it. This new thought teaching that we have, it's wonderful. And many of us. Get the information, understand the information, but it's all head information. But it's got to move from our head to the point where we do it, where we feel it, where we know it beyond just what we read. I know it because I proved it. I know it because it showed up in my life. That's what new thought is. It's being. Being the love. I told Rise the other week, they were, it was about to be Valentine's Day, and I said, don't look for a Valentine, be a Valentine. Be that love. Be that acceptance. Be that listening ear. Be that encouragement. Be love. Whatever you are, you attract. We look for love sometimes from other people, for things, from places. We look for uh, affirmation and confirmation from other people. We need to look and practice. When's the last time you said your name and said hello? Or have you? Have you ever looked in the mirror? Louise Hay talks about mirror work. Looking in the mirror, looking into your eyes and saying, that's another one. Look into your eyes. Take your glasses off. Look in your eyes. And guys, I know that's harder for you. But do it. And I will challenge you to do that. And You'll be surprised at my, what might happen. You might burst out. In, you might just break down and weep like a baby. You might want to shout for joy and do a little holy dance. But something's going to happen. If you Something inside of you. And sometimes the tears are releasing something that you thought you were over. 
you thought you had met, but you'll find out in loving yourself, it's still there. But then when you see it, you can really, truly release it. So we want to try this presence. No. It's harmonized, it's magnetized, and it's They tell us that our brains send out, our thoughts send out electrical charges, but our heart is like So the thoughts we think and the words we say go, but it's that heart love that draws us back to the child. With that innocence, with that heart that loves unconditionally, when that heart says, you're okay, just, I just want to play in heaven, just, just have fun. We get older and we have to get stuff there. It's not fun anymore. When's the last time you just had fun? When you just laugh, I've gotten to now when it goes for music and things. I want something that's going to either make me smile and make me happy or make me laugh. I cannot do the the drama stuff, the scary stuff, and all. I cannot. Do it. And I have not seen some of the popular films, you know, with big actors in it because of the content of the movie. I don't want anything to upset the peace of my soul. I want my soul in it. And see, I'm very sensitive. When I see these kinds of things, then I dream about them. I don't want to perpetuate those kinds of ideas in my life. I want happy thoughts. I want to see, yeah, I want to see the love and the romance. I want to live happily ever after. And you can say I'm viewing the world through rose-colored glasses, and so what? That's what I want in my world. With a child. With a child. You know that you can shift. And you know, so many people we run into, I know all of those wonderful people that you run into who make you really, really question this truth. It's like, oh, I'm supposed to love you. Well, it's not that outer them that you're supposed to recognize. It's the inner part that you recognize. Because when they're showing out and, and, and acting not so nice, it's because they're in they're hurting. You might not know the reasons why they're hurting, but when people have, they're usually in a lot. So just send someone bless them. Call forth the good in them. We say namaste all the time. Do you know what that really means? I've called forth the light in you. Spirit in you, Christ in you, the higher you. I just don't look at you for who you are physically or what your name is. I look at you because you're a child of God. Just and we all want to be happy. I don't care where on the planet we are. We all want the necessities of life. We all want to be happy. We all want to be healthy. We all want to be peaceful. We're not different. If you cut us, you all bleed the same red blood. You peel this outer layer off, we all look the same. But with a child, show compassion. How do we show compassion? By caring, by being concerned, by wishing and praying for well-being of everyone, 
not just us. Whatever your need is, whatever your prayer need is, whatever your desire is, there's someone else in the universe who needs and wants the same thing. So be compassionate, caring, loving. How can I be a blessing? How can I share the word of encouragement? What can I do to express the Christ? To touch somebody. What can I do? Who can I share? How can I share? Love. Enfold your body. And take a deep breath and say your name. And as you say your name, the Lord, I love you. When you say your name, Lord, I love you. The Lord, I love you. The Lord, I love you. That feels good. To love you. To know that. You are love, you are lovable, and you are love. You are love, you are lovable. So, as we go through this time, of, let love lead the way. Let love and die in life. If we tune into spirit, that's what scripture says God is, is love. That presence, that power. Let love lead the way. Let love, let love guide you. Let love answer. Yeah, we have problems. The, the world is not going to stop just because we decide to practice and express our love. But what's going to happen is there will be a shift in your direction. There will be a shift. Let love. Do you tune in? Many of us do our meditation in the morning and prayer. But you just ask Spirit, what is it you want me to do today? How is it you want me to show up? Where is it you want me to go? And a lot of times, you know, whenever I, especially when I'm preaching, my prayer when I'm sitting there is when I open my mouth, you speak. I don't want Dolores to talk. I want the spirit in me to come through me and express to you. I want whatever I say to be something that you can use, something that will guide you in your life. See, I my greatest desire is for this new thought that to change tremendously and make it so joyful and and, and everything we do. I love Reverend Paul's idea. You can't outgive God, so whatever you put in this jar comes back to you. Bless. And multiply. I don't care what it is. Whatever you put in comes back to you. Bless and multiply. And you see it in nature all the time. Look out the window. You couldn't begin to count the number of leaves on the pine tree out there and all around or the blaze of the grass. That's an infinite and just like source is infinite in nature, source can be infinite in your life if you tune in, tap into it. It can be miracle. So that love, greatest healing, harmonizing, magnetizing. So shut it. And walk 